Welcome to the Final Fantasy 2 base HP challenge run on the PlayStation version. This is Final Fantasy Origins. I don't think I have any saved games, so go with the new game. So as the name suggests, the base HP challenge run, the overriding rule is uh, nobody is allowed to gain HP ever throughout the game. This includes all the fourth party characters we get through the game uh, as well as our original starting three, which is the bigger, bigger challenge obviously. I'll... Uh, go through the rules as and when uh, they come up but yeah uh, pretty much standard rules are uh, not allowed I'm not allowing any game breaking stuff I'm not entirely sure whether the blood sword can be considered uh, game breaking for this challenge run but uh, yeah that's an optional uh, restriction not allowed to use the blood sword uh, obviously no instant death spells uh, yeah I will comment on additional restrictions as and when they come up. Let's take care of the naming first of all. So this challenge run was actually inspired by the various uh, Fire Emblem 0% growth uh, runs that I've been watching recently. So we're going to go with the Fire Emblem theme for the characters here. Now, Firion. He is the de facto leader of the party. And uh, there are certain mechanics in the game which rely on his stats. Added to that, so effectively, Firion cannot be allowed to die. He forms a very core part of our team. Also, his stats are very much balanced all across the board. So, like a certain character, he might turn out good or he might turn out bad or he might turn out average. All three possibilities are open with Firion. So, naturally, this what the hell did I do? Wrong button, wrong button, oh my god. All of that build up just gone to waste. <laughs> and if Furion <coughs> is going to be our Ellie Wood. Wow, I think I can just about fit the name. No, I can't. Crap. So it'll, it's it's gonna have to be Elwood. But I'm gonna refer to him as Elwood, obviously. Okay. So that that's Elwood. Maria. Well, what to say about her? What to say about Maria? Huh? She has pathetic HP, pathetic stamina, pathetic attack. She is quite agile and uh, she starts off with a bow. Ring any bells? <laughs> I am so damn tempted to name her Rebecca. But no, I just, well, I just can't do that. Everybody's got to be, got to play a lead role here since we only got four, rather three characters. So she's going to be our Lin. And Guy, well, who does that leave? Hey Thorio, how's it going? You end stream already? How is Dark Souls 3 by the way?
Now, guy, you probably already know what I'm. Who is left out of this trio? But yeah, amazing attack. Uh, lots of stamina, lots of beginning HP as well and in a normal run he would uh, obviously gain a lot of HP as well and ultimately he turned out to be a pa the powerhouse, the physical powerhouse of the team. Who else can it be but Hector? Already it is very clear who is going to be leading the team. And Leon, well... <laughs> uh, you know what, it's not even a spoiler. It's a freaking challenge run. This guy is obviously the bad guy. Not really, but uh, well, yeah, he's kind of the bad guy for most of the game. I confess to not being very familiar with Fire Emblem. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we've been over that. If I remember correctly, I did uh, recommend a couple of Fire Emblem titles to you. I really should play that at some point. This guy is obviously going to be, uh, holy shit, what's his name? Nurgle, that's right. He's going to be Nurgle. I intend to play Fire Emblem, eventually. Well, mm, all I can say is it might be hit or miss because uh, it's a purely tactical game. With RPG elements, but uh, well, I don't care much for the RPG. But for sure, if, if you haven't played it before, you should give it a try, at least a try. The only negative thing I can say about it is uh, it requires a certain amount of brain power. And uh, if you're going to be streaming after long days of work, it's probably not what you're looking for. Kind of, uh, a game like chess where you need to concentrate, otherwise you're just going to die. That's the only negative thing I can say about it, and uh, even that, <laughs> even that, I only mention because uh, it's a uh, lot of the times it's, it's the same with me. If I've just woken up from a nice slumber and I'm looking to play a game, uh, if I start up Fire Emblem, oh my God, I die so many times, I just give it up and uh, go and play an RPG where I don't really need to think. And I don't really need to think RPGs, that doesn't include FF2. But yeah, cannot, cannot recommend Fire Emblem enough. I mean personally, I used to, I used to absolutely suck at Fire Emblem. But uh, in general, I do like tactical games. Part of the reason uh, I really love FF2 is because it's got a not quite subtle tactical component to it. Well, we've got all our names or our characters set up. I guess the only thing to do is get started. We love tactical games. I'm just not terribly good at them. Hey, I was the same, mind you. I was the same. But what I found out is that it really just takes a little bit of um, what what do you call it? Preparation. Uh, you just uh, kind of uh, gather some knowledge about the game. And uh, once you have a foundation on that, if you go ahead and play that game, I think uh, you're much more likely to be successful at it. My strategy in strategy games is to have a single character who hits very, very <laughs> I call that the Pokemon strategy.
Start with these name assignments. Yes, sir. And I think it's the same cutscene, so we can skip ahead. Pokemon Start is a very apt name for it. It's what I use. There's a plethora of experience available in the Pokemon games, so effectively, if you just uh, you, you can steamroll with your starter. Uh, don't need to put a lot of thought into that. Really, training up other Pokemon is just for fun, and of course, you need HM slaves. Well, for a change, I'm not going to be focusing on the dialogue. So, speedrun strats. Start only challenges and you will challenge. Indeed. And we died. I just started only one of the games. Which one was it? Have you actually streamed Pokemon? When? So, this brings us to a point here and something I wanted to mention. First up, although it's very obvious that we are not supposed to win this fight, I'm going to still count this as a wipe. And let's go ahead with exclamation point rip. a couple of Pokemon randomizer nice it was the one with the pink ah oh, that must be diamond pearl I love that penguin Piplop oh my god I just love him so the point I wanted to mention uh, I'm gonna try what is what I like to call as a blind simulation so obviously uh, there is no way that I can play FF2 blind now. I know way too much about it. Diamond Pearl, that's the one. People are luckily for me, was it a penguin made of knives? <laughs> yeah, it's the steel penguin. Incredibly strong. So the blind simulation I'm talking about is uh, for for aspects of the game, I'm going to pretend that it's blind just to demonstrate uh, how much of a challenge this challenge run is because uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, and not just not just from a third party, even looking at my own playthroughs, so-called challenge runs, I always over prepare and it's because I know so much about the game, even if I do say so myself. I always over prepare and uh, in the end everything just ends up easy so the blind simulation I'm talking about I'm uh, apply specifically to monsters uh, and to a certain extent uh, game progression as well obviously I don't give a damn about the story I know exactly where to go what items to pick up etc etc what weapons I'm gonna get but in terms of monsters Effectively, this challenge run is uh, built around how to deal with the opposition. So, which is why, as and when we encounter new monsters, I'm going to pretend that uh, I've never seen them before and uh, try to adapt my strategy accordingly. So because of this, and I'm not entirely sure that I can handle such a... Uh, what I expect to be a frustrating experience. So, what I expect is this is going to be a lot more of what you see on screen right now. And that's why I have a wipe counter and uh, I'm very interested to know how, how high that number is going to go. So let's get started proper with the game. The 
it makes the heart grow fun. <laughs> Oh my god, these old games. It's a shame this game doesn't have a finished randomizer. Yeah, I'm actually working on the randomizer. It was half way done. Is there? I'll need to look into that. Uh, Shihali told me that uh, there's literally no randomizer. I tried to randomize uh, shop items, but uh, that didn't lead to terribly interesting gameplay. I think uh, the main thing is to randomize the monsters. So I'm actually working on one. This is a randomizer for Final Fantasy Dawn of Souls. Oh, the Dawn of Souls. Uh, I actually saw uh, someone playing that randomizer. Literally nothing is randomized. At least, not that nothing that I could see. Uh, so, definitely the FF1 part of Dawn of Souls is randomized. But I'm talking specifically about the NES version. There's a very, very advanced... Uh, uh, Randomizer for Final Fantasy 1 and holy shit. They've, they've like almost changed the gameplay itself uh, Latest I saw was uh, there's some shard hunts going on. So instead of collecting four orbs you have to collect 30 shards and uh, Which will open chaos and only then can you proceed uh, to the final dungeon These guys the randomizer devs for Final Fantasy 1 have literally just created a new game it's just amazing. Hopefully, yeah, I mean, I don't expect to go that far, but uh, yeah, I'm working on whenever I get time. I like that. And I think that's pretty much the only thing left for me. Uh, I don't have any ideas for challenges after this. F1 randos getting linked to the past. I've heard a lot about the LTTP randomizer as well. I haven't seen one. But yeah, I can I can assume how far they're going. I need to run the LTTP run. It's been a minute. How long has it been? I haven't seen you play the older Zelda games. Oris has asked in that race. So, two years ago? That long? First thing to do is to set the tech speed. Uh, no, no, we don't need the memo file. That reminds me about the memo file. Hmm, 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 hmm. An optional restriction in this run is going to be uh, I'm not allowed to use the memo file. That is, of course, uh, not a blanket rule. It's uh, it's kind of respecting the policy of no saves coming. And that race was like a few few months ago. Okay, I didn't know you had a race with Arius. So in order to respect the policy of no saves coming, uh, I'm not going to use a memo file, which means no save within dungeons. Uh, additionally, I'm only allowed to save, and that too on the memory card, only outside a town or outside a dungeon. So that puts uh, a lot more restriction on this. Because that's how it was in the original NES version as well. So my intention here is to, in 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 a way, in an in an extreme way, actually, in an extreme way, demonstrate how the NES version was intended to be played. 
according to me in my opinion if you played it the way the devs intended for you to play it there is a crap ton of grinding and well we'll see how many times we wipe i mean it's almost every time you encounter a new enemy you would wipe and you would need to figure out uh, how that enemy works and uh, then figure out a strategy to deal with them because the traditional kind of grinding doesn't work in final fantasy 2 so that is my intention here uh, let's go over with some all right first we need to change the configuration auto targeting is on dash is on cursor will be memory I'm very curious to see how this plays out so am i so am i fact of the matter is that uh, i have done something like seven or eight challenge runs and all of them have been far far easier than what i anticipated so which is why i'm turning it up to 16 and why i mentioned 16 is obviously level 16 is the max level in final fantasy 2 uh, tech speed fast please not the most familiar with this game well given the fact that you enjoyed playing ff2 a lot i would say you would remember uh, many many parts of it but that would probably from a story perspective stick around here long enough and you will pick up a lot of the mechanics and the tactical aspect of this game in fact yeah that that's all this game is to me i don't give a shit about the story zero is inverse on flat on impossible to me <laughs> Now, to be honest, it is impossible on the version that you played, which I believe you thought was the only one available. Turns out there are like seven versions. The reason I'm picking up this version is because uh, it's as close as it gets to the original NES version in terms of difficulty as well as uh, the mechanics. Minus the bugs and a lot of quality of life changes. As I mentioned many many times before, the later remakes, they made things a lot more easier so that uh, you didn't really have to know a lot of stuff to uh, go through the game. It's still difficult, mind you. Oh no, I knew there was some other, I just got the chibi version so that I won't have to download too long because... <laughs> well, efficiency. Uh, the configuration is taken care of. And we've got the keyword from Hilda, right? So, about the party configuration. What do we have here? Now, although I mentioned that it's a blind simulation, uh, the way you approach Final Fantasy 2, as in these uh, harder versions, Okay, I'm just going to flat out talk about this this uh, this remake and nothing else. And to a certain extent NES, because uh, that's all that's in scope. The way you approach it is uh, not completely blind. You're supposed, you're expected to know at least basics of the mechanics, how it works. Um, for, for instance, all your stats level up independently. All your stats level up based on usage. So if you... Uh, you need to use magic to grow your magic stats. You need to attack to grow your uh, weapon skills and uh, your physical attack stats and so on and so forth. Basics like that you are expected to know, which uh, I can only assume that it was part of the manual. Probably not. I've, not, I've never actually seen the FF2 manual. All the knowledge I have about it is via uh, the internet, obviously. So, I have, I, I have no clue how people back in the day managed this. I have absolutely no clue. Um, if I were to take a guess, I would say probably you just experiment. I mean, I can imagine a scenario where uh, I've got, I saved up a crap ton of money. I got the FF2 cartridge for 100 bucks. And I found that 
I got my shit beat out of me. What was I supposed to do? Give up on the game? Hell no. I've been saving up for like 3-4 months for this. So I'm going to stick with it, grind it out and find out how the hell all that stuff works. I can only imagine that's that's what must have happened. Otherwise, these days, nobody really cares. I mean, uh, the game doesn't get the game doesn't tell you how it works. You just go on to the next game. So all that uh, rant, what was it for? It was just to. It was just to inform whoever is listening that. In my opinion, the way you're supposed to play Final Fantasy 2 is you need a certain amount of background knowledge on it. And then, it doesn't stop there either. As and when, uh, as you progress through the game, you're expected to... You're, you're expected to then think your way out of challenges. Because because of the tactical nature of this game, it the devs actually had the forethought to play to to put stat restrictions, experience points restrictions on the amount of the amount you could grind. So, for instance, in a traditional RPG, although it is very very inefficient, you could just hang around in the starting town and grind your way all the way up to the level cap. Not so in this. You can grind your way up to a certain level and then it's capped off. You will literally not get any experience. And then when you move to the next area, you'll get your ass kicked again. And you thought, oh man, I grinded for 10, 10 hours and I st I'm still getting my ass kicked. Why is that? Well, that's the way it works here. And I'll make no excuses about this. It's a brutal game. It is supposed to be a brutal game. Actually, it turns out that if you know what you're what you're doing, it's uh, ridiculously easy. Which which is the reason I am uh, doing these challenge runs in the first place. It's uh, it is it is it it was expected, not expected. It was designed to be an incredibly brutal game. You're supposed to. Um, attempt to progress to a next area get your shit beat and then try to think your way i mean how could you move past that now that's how you're expected to do and uh, that's what i'm going to try to demonstrate in this challenge run oh man i looked up the f2 instruction man and i found a scan f2 in the states with ff4 <laughs> yeah So that's what I'm going to try to demonstrate here, how Final Fantasy 2 was intended to be played. And uh, honestly, that was how I approached it as well, obviously because I had the web available to me. I was uh, able to find out uh, pretty much any information I wanted instantly. So. Whenever I, I never really got stuck. Every time uh, you, every time I encountered something difficult, uh, there was a ready resource available to me, uh, which just I could just look up uh, monster stats and figure out a way to deal with that monster. I didn't have to con constantly wipe two powerful enemies and uh, try and experiment my way through it. Screen map for fun. Usual strategy guide for everything. I'm uh I don't think so. I think I think there's a specific name for that. That's uh what's that? Nintendo Power Nintendo Power. Isn't it? I think Nintendo Power is a separate document. The instruction manual is probably something else entirely. It would just list uh, crap like uh weapons, what weapons are available, armor that's what I would expect from the uh, from the instruction manual. I think what you're talking about is a Nintendo Power, whatever you call it, guide. That was, I think, released shortly after Final Fantasy II. No, so manual slippers. Wow, that is that is quite surprising. That is very surprising, actually. Huh. 
they should have had something similar for FF2 but uh, from what i've been told literally no information in the manual for FF2 and for FF3 so let's go over our general strategy here right now we got three characters and uh, ंगली So, first up, I can link it if you'd like. Yes, please. So, first point of strategy immediately we have uh, the row system. In Final Fantasy II, characters in the back row cannot be targeted by physical hits at all. Obviously, it's weird that way. I don't have the FF one on because I've seen that one in person. <laughs> nice. The row system is uh, very extreme in this version. Characters in the back row cannot be targeted by physical hits. Also, the way monsters work is that uh, it is mandatory for them to have physical hits. Um, anything apart from physical hits is considered magic. Even stuff such as using a bow or uh, I don't know, whatever. any everything is considered a magic attack and uh, as such it requires mp as long as a monster has mp it can use its magic attack that is of course if it's uh, configured as a magical monster apart if if not monsters will, will always only physically attack you and combined with the row system that means that uh, monsters can only attack guys in the front row So immediately the strategy that I'm going to be using is only have one guy in the front row. By having just one person in the front row, it means that every attack is concentrated on him, which might seem like a bad thing, but uh, the way it works out is that you can predict who is going to get hit and because you can predict, you can cast buffs, uh cures on that guy so that's why it makes sense to have uh, exactly one person in the front row everybody is going to be everybody else is going to be in the back row uh what is the back row used for so bows can be used from the back row as well as magic so obviously that's what i'm going to be doing uh as far as possible hand everyone a bow although bows uh, don't do a lot of damage that that's pretty much the only option available in the back row so no option basically the next question is which one of these guys should be in the front row should it be elwood lin or hector let's go over each of them individually Now, Elwood has 30 HP, Lin has 20 HP, Hector has 40 HP. The HP gain mechanic here is obviously the more HP you lose, the higher chances you have of uh, gaining HP. We want to avoid that. We can avoid that by by approaching it in a couple of ways. Either having the guy just die, in which case obviously they're not going to get anything. or curing uh landing cures on them before the battle is over so that they are back to their original hp the algorithm is very basic in that sense uh it just checks for uh, hp at the start of battle versus hp at the start of battle another strategy is just to have them on uh, one hp but having them on one one hp means that any hit which lands they they will die 
of course uh, one more thing to mention about the row system is that uh, if the guy in the front row dies then all the guys in the back row will automatically move up to the front row at the end of the turn which means that we'll be completely screwed if that happens so we don't want that our requirement here is we don't want the guy to take a lot of damage and we don't want the guy to die how do we manage that uh, to me what uh, the thing that makes the most sense is having guy uh, i mean hector up front because of his obviously larger hp bank uh, enemies later in the game will definitely just one shot him there is no doubt about it but they will one shot the others as well early game is where hector has the advantage it is my hope that is the way i plan that uh, early game monsters will not have enough uh, attack to actually cause enough damage to hector to force force a hp up on him additionally he also has the best physical stats out of these three and so putting him up front and having him uh, hit stuff melee makes more sense so effectively the competition is only between elevood and hector maria is out because of her crappy hp even early game monsters i think uh, well let's look at it this way she is twice as likely to die as hector so it, it, it's a no brainer she, this woman is useless she's going to stay in the back row damn it the competition now is between elevood and hector now why is elevood elevood well uh one of the mechanics of this game is uh there's there's a there's a couple of things that are based on elevood stats specifically his agility now whether we get preemptives in battle or if it's a neutral start or it's an ambush is actually going to be a very important thing in this challenge run that is what i anticipate especially in late game late game we cannot afford any ambushes whatsoever Uh, early game there is nothing we can do about it but uh, as i said early game hector should be able to survive survive well enough now it's everything is based uh, the chance of an ambush which is what we are concentrating on is based on elevood's uh, agility so elevood's starting agility is uh, 10 now the way it the comparison works is uh essentially rng rolls a number between 0 and 99 and compares it to elevood's agility and uh based on that there is a chance based on another random number that the encounter can be an ambush but the point to note here is that if elevood has 99 agility that means there is zero chance of an ambush preemptives obviously i will take if whenever i get but i'm not going to bank on that uh as i said there are two random numbers involved and uh, preemptive would be dependent on the other random number which i cannot control so we need to get uh, elevood's agility to 99 as soon as possible to negate chances of uh, ambushes um as i mentioned blind simulation Uh, we don't know at what point in time this is going to be a very important factor and uh, as far as i'm concerned that could well be make or break for this challenge run also i'm assuming that uh, once he gets to 99 agility that there would be no ambushes i'm basing this on the nes mechanics if if they screwed this up in this version then uh, Yeah, I'm kind of screwed, but uh I'm fairly confident that's how it works. So, I'm going to plan based on that. How to get his agility up to 99? The way agility gains work is based on your evasion percent. So, if you look his evasion is 1-14, 14%. Let's concentrate on the 14%. 
now once again there's a very very rng rolls between 0 and 255 this time and it compares it to evasion percent divided by 4 that's how pathetic it is and this this calculation happens at the end of each battle to determine agility gain so right off the bat since you can only gain one point of stat per battle i'm going to have to go through a minimum of 99 fights well not quite but let's just say 99 for now i'm going to have to go through a minimum of 99 battles to get his agility up to 99 what makes the situation worse is that uh, his evasion even when it's at 99% he's only going to have a 10% chance to gain agility that's how bad agility gain is so i want this guy at 99% as soon as possible how do we do that uh the key is shields shields give you evasion and the more and more shield levels give you uh more more evasion percent and the more time i spent at 99% evasion the faster i'm going to get elevated up to 99% how am i going to achieve this by having him dual wield shields i'm going to have i'm going to equip him with shields on both hands right now he's got the broadsword equip on his right hand so that that will be double the evasion i get and that that's multiplied by shield level as well so because of this effectively elewood is going to be useless for uh, much of the beginning of the game and ergo by default he's going to stay in the back row i did mention that he was going to be useless but very important to our strategy so that's decided uh, hector is going to be our tank up front uh, the thing is and also because of the evasion uh, evasion mechanic of this game uh, since hector is the only one up front he is going to level up his evasion crazy fast and uh, it's it's one of the it's one of my gripes about this game that uh, the enemy progression really doesn't keep up with your evasion level at least uh, when you are going with uh, strategies like uh, just putting up one guy up front his evasion is going to be so high even like 20% through the game that uh, Yeah, enemies are just not going to be able to land a hit. I don't think I could think something like this through this much. This is also coordinated. You're too smart for me. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. See, um, what I am explaining here is exactly how I I think about while playing games like this. Uh, although although it's classified as RPGs, as I said, since there's a tactical component to it, that gets my brain into. that thinking mode and that's the way i i try to i mean the more you know about the mechanics the more you can uh, strategize and uh, coming up with strategies is a lot of fun coming up with the uh, what to do is kind of hard for me but coming up with how to do some some things well i am a programmer so it's it's a lot of fun for me which is why i love tactical games and uh, yeah RPGs with tactical components to it and uh, by my long winded explanation you can see why I absolutely love Final Fantasy 2 So yeah I was talking about uh, what I perceive as uh, issues with this game that the monsters they just don't uh, their physical hits can't keep up with uh, your evasion if you go with this strategy which is why in a way this this is something i called evasion tanking just 20% through the game as you will see hector will be invulnerable to physical hits because of the evasion mechanic but uh, that is not something uh, remember blind simulation that is not something that uh, we need to take into account um, for now for starters his evasion is at <laughs> 1%. Naturally, I'm going to be giving him a shield at least. And leveling uh, leveling up the crap out of that shield so that he has as much evasion as possible. Also, uh 
whenever in any battles where the back row members with their weak bows can finish off the monsters, I will equip double shields to Hector so that uh, he can get shields even faster. Shield level is uh, the most important thing here. Yeah, but the thing is his agility sucks uh, because of which his evasion sucks. At the beginning of the game, it's not going to matter that much. Uh, because of his pathetic evasion, I'm going to be loading up on defensive gear at the start of the game, which is not something that uh, is recommended in Final Fantasy 2. In any other RPGs, you would always prefer defense over... What the fuck? Okay, okay. Okay, that was just me. My bot, I mean. <laughs> uh, in any traditional RPG, you would tank up on defense uh, rather than coasting on evasion. But in Final Fantasy 2, it's the exact opposite. So yeah, let's get started. We have our general strategy ready. Uh, we need to do some shopping first up. Thankfully, don't need to talk to any stupid people. Where's the dash? There we go. Oh man, the dash is... Yeah, the dash is so slow. Down with defense. Long live. <laughs> the fact is, it's only really a mechanic in this, uh, in this game. I've never seen it anywhere else. Well, of course, uh, the fact is, since everything levels up independently, you can just uh, forget about all your other stats and uh, send your evasion through the roof in this version. But uh, in all the other RPGs, of course, uh, all your stats are tied to level. So I suppose uh, you can't really level up your evasion independently. You have to level up your actual levels. And if you're going to be leveling up your levels, I mean, what am I talking about? If you're going to be increasing your levels you're going to get all your other stats so evasion doesn't really play a significant role anyway so i suppose that's how that's how uh, they implemented in uh, normal rpgs why well, evasion is way better than defense in dark souls really fact of the matter is games like dark souls rely a lot on uh, precision of execution this is proper turn based take your time think about your strategy i think uh, in uh, action action rpgs as long as you have good uh, what am i talking about if you have good execution if you have good execution you can pretty much go without defense without evasion without anything i mean i'm obviously exaggerating it i haven't played any you just dodge every hit and uh, you don't need to worry about defense. <laughs> okay, I get your point now. <laughs> hey, Shihali. Hey, you've already seen that. I haven't added anything to the uh, preliminary notes. Uh, it's just that I've uh, thought thought a lot more about the challenge, and uh, yeah. Okay. After the Wonder Swan, after playing the Wonder Swan for so long, this just feels so slow. Where's the B button? And uh, yeah, I need to get in out of the habit of asking people for dialogue. I can just uh, make a beeline for things. First up, what do we need? I, as I just explained, I need two shields on Firion. Let's unequip everyone. She's okay with the bow. Axe needs to go. Actually, he does need the leather armor. As I just mentioned, uh, I'm gonna be tanking up on defense for the beginning part of the game at work yes 
Uh, Firion needs double shields, so I'm gonna need one buckler here. Do you have the challenge idea? What about Antarctic Wing for the total? Does it really make a difference? Uh, by the time I get to the total, by the time I get to the Adamant Toys, uh, he's not gonna be able to land a single hit. And uh, I can reveal that without quote unquote spoilers because uh, yeah, that's how it's going to be. And uh, one buckler for Guy. And of course, some armor for Guy. Silence and Fog or Elemental, they won't work on Red Soul. Yep, uh, I have a very specific strategy for the Red Soul. And it's survival, uh, not shutting him down. Thankfully he only has, uh, how much, 32, 35 MP, which works in my favor. Not like the Yellow Soul. Yellow Soul is just terrible, oh my god. It's going to take a while to actually reach that point, but oh my god, that's going to be such a troll. Normally, the Gigas would be a troll in that dungeon. It's going to be the Yellow Soul for me. Uh, right, that's my shopping list for now. Let's talk about. Obviously, the guys in the back row are going to get a bow. Let's talk about weapon selection for Hector. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to enforce the blind uh, simulation rule here. Uh, I'm just going to flat out uh, say that unarmed is effectively, essentially only unarmed and uh, sword skills are uh, required. Pretty much nothing else is, uh, well, everything, all other weapons have their uses, but uh, for this specific run, and in general, I found that uh, for the beginning of the game, you you need unarmed. Uh, it it out damages any other weapon you you have available at this point in time. And after that, you get uh, quite a lot of swords, so you can just uh, concentrate on swords. It's uh, totally fine, especially with evasion tanking. You really don't care about uh, how many turns it takes to bring down the enemy. Just uh, keep leveling your swords up because <laughs> later in the game you get some swords bro let's go shopping oh my god I need to get used to these buttons after the wonder swan this guy is walking so slow and holy shit it's been an hour already I'll be right back
Right, I'm back. Uh, Shahali, if you're, uh, if you can hear me, uh, would you mind giving the exclamation point FF2 monster a try? Two bucklers, um, a leather cap and a leather, leather gloves. Exclamation point FF2 monster. Exclamation point FF2 monster followed by the monster name. Uh, let's uh, equip everything. Alright, it works. Nice. For the moment... Uh, for the moment, I've only I'm only documenting uh, the magic defense and their resistances, and maybe I'll expand on this. Obviously, my original intention was to was to have the bot watch the stream and uh, bring up. Excuse me monster information as and when uh, the encounter appears bomb not found what uh, just for reference uh, i'm basically extracting all of this from the gamer corner site is it not named bomb ah that's so sad well, in my defense, <laughs> I only tested for Abyss Worm, which is, let it be known, uh, my favorite monster. Jair has that, but it works because he only uses it for F1 and no other versions. I know, I know. I, I wanted to uh, do do one exactly like Jair, but oh my god, that is so far out of reach right now. I mean. I have full confidence in my abilities. Given time, I'll be I'll be able to do something like that. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have the bomb emote. I'm uh, disappointed that uh, the monster is not named Bomb, or either, or maybe my command is not working. <laughs> strange, very strange. I'll need to look into that. But yeah, I'd appreciate it if uh, at regular intervals, if you guys could just test this out. Equip shit. Buckle around uh, Ellie Wood. One single buckler on him. And of course, the defensive equipment here. And they're happy to test it out. Yeah, actually, actually that'll be cool. Uh, whenever you see. I mean, obviously, I'll be getting into a lot of random encounters. So just uh, every now and then, uh, just pick out a name and uh, test out the FF2 monster. That'll be really great. Uh, okay, so basic equipment is ready, and I'm already down to a how much? Oh, no, that's steps, 113 steps. I'm I'm down to 170 gil. So gil is going to be a huge pain in the ass at the beginning part of the game. Although I might be asleep soon. Hey, not a problem, mate. Not a problem. So, I wanted to give Elevode a bow in his item slot. Just so that... Because... 
he only really needs to end the battle with the uh, double shields on for 99% evasion during the battle he can use the bow but uh, yeah i'm kind of in a cash crunch here but what i am going to do is i'm going to give uh, hector a, a spare buckler in his item slot and i do have the broadsword right indeed i can sell this crap at least i'll keep the broadsword for training purposes for hector Hector with the sword just sounds so cheesy. He needs his axes. Cash crunch is a little too real. <laughs> oh man, you had to remind me of your shift change. I'm so sad about that. What am I going to do without watching a Super Thorio stream? Yeah, it is it's ah uh, let's just move past it already. Uh spare buckler for Hector. Yes, please. And sell some crap. For a change, the t the text is fine. I still remember Z B B and uh, whatever this was. <laughs> oh, the wonder sword. Should I give broadsword as well? Not right now. Not right now. Okay. Wait, wait, what button was that? I have to get used to these buttons. Right. Um equipment, damn it. Equipment is done. Is it time for the mayhem? Not quite. Uh just give me a couple minutes. In for to consider magic, uh, obviously the most obvious candidate. I uh, just got a notification. No thanks. Most important spell is to buy a cure. So Hector is obviously going to get hit, especially since he's defense tanking instead of evasion tanking at the beginning of the game. And uh, the only guaranteed way to make sure he doesn't get a HP, because remember, any HP up, stamina up is okay. HP up, I'm gonna have to reset. HP up is a reset, and uh, uh, for logical purposes, for this challenge run, it's considered a wipe. I'm gonna use the wipe counter for that. So I need to make sure that uh, I always have him cured up at the end of battle that is going to be a prerogative right another decision to make is who is going to be our mage uh, I don't see much debate on this uh, it has to be Elliwood Lynn, because she's going to be using bows, she's not going to have any evasion, and evasion pays a uh, factor in turn order. She's always going to go last. I don't want that. Uh, Elliwood, because he's going to have very high evasion, even even at the beginning of the game. Dual shields. Uh, yeah, he's he's almost always. In fact, he's guaranteed to go first once he gets 99 evasion for at least half of the game. He's guaranteed to go first so that he would be the logical candidate for mage now why only one mage i'll get to it soon enough but uh, let's just make our way out and save 
I really desperately need to save after doing all this stuff. Well, I haven't actually done much. Just a, a crap load of exposition. Let's save. Save on the memory card. Okay, here's another thing we need to consider. Uh, the policy I'm going to be following is save save slots. One is for uh, the base save. It's going to be always going to be outside town only. So in case I wipe inside a dungeon or on the world map, I will uh, load from slot number one. In case I discover a new enemy and I need to do some grinding. Grinding and grind outside town is the best way, of course. Best place. Alter is done, by the way. Save, save slot 2 will be for right outside uh, dungeon. And save slot 3 will be for temporary saves. We'll get to it uh, as and when it happens. But the most important is save slot 1 which will be right outside town. Okay, so why only am I, am I going to use uh, just one mage? One very important... Uh, it's not a rule, rather it's a lack of restriction for uh, this highly restrictive challenge run is I'm allowing what is a very well-known exploit in Final Fantasy 2 which is called the Select Cancel. It is, of course, uh, it was only really available in these older uh, versions, not available in GBA and PSP. You, you don't really need it in there, but yeah, let me not talk about that. So using Select Cancel, uh, to put things simply, you can grind up to the level cap, right outside the starting town. And it doesn't even take a lot of time. However, I am only going to be using Select Cancel as a replacement for the traditional form of grinding. Which means that uh, I am only going to be using the Select Cancel exploit to save time because I hate grinding. What this uh, entails is that I'm always going to be only doing the minimum possible thing I need to do to survive. And that is why I'm only starting out with one mage. If later on it turns out that I need more than one mage, I'll be happy to make uh, Hector or Lin into... I'll be happy to make uh, have them learn magic as well. But for now, uh, we only have one mage because uh, as as discussed, we definitely need someone to cure. Okay, so it's time for the mayhem now. Let's get into our first encounter. On the way to Gatria. And immediately it's a fucking ambush. Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay. So, Firion needs to get, uh... <laughs> it's called a strangler, is it? How idiotic. Uh, by the way, this guy's name is uh, Leg Eater, Leg Space Eater. Try that out. Hornet, Hornet at least, okay. Right off the bat, uh, as I discussed, Elliwood needs to get 99% evasion as soon as possible. Now, unfortunately, I can only gain one shield level per battle. But I'm going to use the Select Cancel exploit to gain one shield level per battle for the first few battles so that uh, his uh, evasion growth just shoots up and uh, he gets to 99% uh, as soon as as soon as uh, possible. Uh, I've calculated that uh, he needs to get up to shield level 11. So it'll take me exactly 11 battles. And uh, since I already know the formula for how much experience you get, uh, yeah, I'm going to also do the optimal number of select cancel as well. So let's get right to it. Uh, first attack will give me 22 experience. So that is. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 
42, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 67, 72, 74, 76, 78, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92, 94, 96, 98, and 100. So Ferian is done. Um, in fact, he's not done. I desperately need to cast Cure. Attack with uh, these two guys. So immediately you can see the effect of dual shields. Uh, he went first. Although there's quite a lot of uh, variation. One damage should not really affect, but I'm going to cure him anyway because of that. So at low at lower evasion levels, uh, the turn order is uh, to a very large extent random. Come on, kill him. Okay, so survived our first battle. And what are the gains? Obviously a shield level and his MP increased. So MP increases, obviously he's going to need a lot of MP. So because he only started off with 5, he's left with only 2 MP. I Immediately I need to go back and heal. And remember, no saves coming. I cannot save at this point. I need to go back to right outside town to save. Oh, and by the way, uh, just in case I forget, uh, in case I wipe and I forget to actually increase the wipe counter, please do feel free to remind me with exclamation point Nino. I'll just show you a sample. I also got a lot of gold from that. 240 gil already. Might be able to afford a bow. But I'm not going to bother with bows for now. Still on the Catria split. So at level 2, uh, the second attack is going to give him 22 experience. So 0, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 74, 76, 78, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92, 94, 96, 98, 100. Preemptively cast cure, even though I don't really need it. Oh, come on. He's going to take so much damage from that poison. As long as Furion goes first and... Uh, not Furion, damn it, Elevood! Elevood goes first and Hector goes second. I think we'll be okay. Poison seems like... Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a problem. I'm more worried about the poison damage than uh, from actual hits. But yeah, <laughs> this is a challenge run after all. Hey, uh, are they at full HP? Yes, they are. So 
So now at level 3, it's going to take me 3 to get 20. Oh my god, the ambushes. The problem here is that uh, these guys can ambush and run away as well. So if somehow turn auto screws me up and uh, they run away before I get to cast cure. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a... Uh, that's something I, there's nothing I can do about that. Anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, he's at level 3 right now, right? Uh, 0, 0, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 26, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 62, 64, 66, We are still fine. I just don't want them to run away. Come on, get the cure. I am banking on that. And then Hector going next. Yikes! We are in dangerous territory here. One damage and uh, one damage should not really you missed. <laughs> Zero damage from poison. Okay, I will take that. <laughs> the RNG gods are in my favor today. Yes, it does look like the RNG gods are in my favor. Now he is at level 4. And uh, apart from the stats which I am proactively grinding, uh, yeah, the, the fights I'm going to get uh, skill ups uh, gradually for uh, whatever else I'm doing. Like uh, obviously, Lin is going to gradually level up her bows. Um, Hector is going to level up his uh, unarmed skill and shield skill gradually. So can't really call that grinding. Uh, now that I'm uh, outside Gatria, I'm just going to heal up. And uh, the save right outside, that would be a split. Now the trek to Finn is kind of iffy. Do I have enough MP to actually survive that? I would need to make some gambles during a trip to Finn. So let's take stock. Uh, 17 MP. I'm a cautious fellow and I don't think that's enough. But I'm not going to grind. What we're going to do is carry carry on ahead. And uh, see, see how difficult the trip is going to be. Uh, of course, I'm going to try and uh, strategically use Cure. So that uh, when, I, when I feel the battle is going to end, that is when I will use Cure. At this point in time... He has evasion of 50. He should be guaranteed first uh, first turn in any battle, especially for these low-level monsters. So don't be afraid to grind real from pay. That's the point, though, Thorio. Uh, what I mentioned is I'm only doing the minimum possible thing. So because because I have uh, enabled the select cancel exploit. You know, the most effective strategy of just uh, cheesing this challenge run, so-called challenge run, would be to just grind everything up to level 16 and just blast your way through the game. I don't want to do that. As I mentioned, I'm trying to demonstrate, it is my intention to demonstrate how Final Fantasy 2 was intended to be played. You were actually intended to suffer. And uh, you would go back and grind only when you really wanted to when you really needed to 
and how would you know when you need to grind obviously a wipe and that is why i'm very interested in uh, the wipe counter although it's uh, it will be incredibly exaggerated uh i like to think that that uh, the wipe counter is a value that would demonstrate the sadism of ff2 developers they expected you to wipe say 500 times through throughout the game and mind you in my opinion that's how you were intended to play and based on what i've been told uh most of most, most of these uh, games from that era that that's how they were built you are expected to wipe uh i believe i saved so yeah let's always live on the edge let's see what happens now wow long stretch without an encounter Furion is at level 4 shield, correct? So that's a large group. Let's see what happens. 0 0 0 22 24 26 28 30 2 6 8 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 100 and uh let's just have him attack for now because of the large group i will cast cure when i foresee the battle is about to end Come on Maria help me out here I mean Lin Lin One guy ran away uh we still have th another guy ran away okay now I definitely need to cast cure If if both of these guys okay now just one if he runs away I'm screwed Although just he only lost uh, 6 HP This is where that decision to not have Maria evasion tank works out if maria had lost 6 hp and ended the battle she would have gained she would have had a much higher chance of gaining hp guy no he probably is not even crossed the threshold where the hp gain uh, kicks in let's check it out anyway of course it's a moot point uh, furin is uh, elevus are you serious that guy got his turn in before now we just got to pray Okay, <laughs> worked out. I'm going to keep him at that HP level. He did gain shield level, right? Uh shield level 5 indeed. So I got away of out of that encounter with just uh, a loss of 1 MP. Things are going great so far. Oh, the ambushes! Still okay, though. Still okay. Zero, 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 zero. Twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty-two, 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 thirty-two. Sandy to Sandy to Sandy six Sandy to eight eight to eight 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 eight
Now you do six damage. Oh my god. But still, uh, I think he only lost two HP. Two HP should not be enough to trigger a HP up. Oh no. Entirely my mistake. Okay, <laughs> he didn't gain. Okay, okay, we're safe. We are safe. And wow. Uh, I thought he got an MP. Did he not get MP? He did not get MP. Now he, uh, Elliewood is at level 6. 5 more levels to go. So Finn can't really be considered a city because uh, we don't have healing available and this is where I'm going to use uh, the second save slot. Technically it's a city so I'm allowed to save here. Wrong button. Well, the game seems like a fair bit of uh, hoping the game will be kind to you. Yes, unfortunately that is the case. I have done uh, what I feel is uh, the best possible preparation for it. Um, as in uh, tanking up on defense rather than evasion. Not sure if things will stay that way or not. Oh, trust me. As his evasion builds up, um, you really need to know the evasion mechanic. As his evasion really levels up, let me just show you the stat. So his evasion is 1-2%, right? So disregard the 2%, we, we can take care of that with equipment alone. Uh, that 1, level 1, he's going to level that up very very quickly because he's the only one, Hector is the only one in the front row. And once he gets to a certain critical level, Enemies just will not be able to land a hit on him. And uh, this is what I was mentioning before. Uh, this is uh, one of my gripes with Final Fantasy 2. The design of uh, monsters in Final Fantasy 2. That uh, this strategy just completely shuts them down. At least the ones that use only physical attacks. Even the final boss. Uh, he only has 8. 8 hit attack. So once my evasion level reaches 8, which is, let me tell you, well, even before halfway through the game, I'm going to reach evasion level of 8. Once it reaches evasion level of 8, that's it. Even the final boss cannot land a hit on me. That's how broken, I can't say broken, that's how stupidly important evasion is in this game. And, uh, Shihali tells me that it's actually an easter egg which is where uh, you're supposed to discover it and once you discover it you basically have the key to this game and it works the other way around if you go any place especially end game with low evasion you are going to get screwed as I have seen many many times it's hilarious Wrong button. Uh, should I cast a cure on him? Since I've made it all the way here and the damp fin split. No, fin split. Yeah, this. Forgot the fin split. More detail I hear about the mechanics of this game. As I said, tactical component. More I realize I never really figured out. Goblin not found. What is wrong with this monster reference?
Yeah, I mean, as I said... So yeah, Thorio, you... As I mentioned before, you played the GBA version, right? Uh, you don't really need to know a lot of stuff. I mean, there is so much... Uh, there is so much knowledge about this game that one can not just this game you can pretty much learn go go as deep as you want for pretty much any game it's just the diehard fans that are really you know and speedrunners i suppose that really just go into it annoying people to work with <laughs> Namely us, Shihali. Uh, try not to teach everything that's really going on. Oh, that must be all one too. Yeah, I agree with that. Once in a while running. Lights are children. I forgot what, what's his shield level now. Uh, I believe it is 6. Yes, I will cast Cure. Should be fine now, I guess. Actually, this is something I did not consider. Having him at lower HP at the beginning of battle and then curing him up and after that even if he takes damage as long as he doesn't fall way too below what he started with it's going to work out. This is something I never considered. Hmm. Is he at level 7 now? Yes. Wrong button again. Very surprised I haven't wiped yet. I swear if I hadn't got the Wild Rose keyword. Feels so good not having to read the text. Oh crap, I'll just be right back.
Okay, obtain the ring. Thankfully, I can just take the shortcut out of this uh, out of this town and save. Seriously, this is this is giving me the jitters. Going any length of time, uh, expecting a wipe every every time. I suppose this is good preparation for if I ever attempt any of those horrible. Horrible, brutal games like Dragon Warrior and whatnot. Not second, second slot. Now let's make it to Gatria. Level seven shield, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, twenty-two, twenty-four. And uh, yeah, just attack. Although I do have a lot of MP. Since I just saved, yeah, I'm not gonna bother casting cure. Even if he gets a HP up, I'll just reset. And thank you for that. Going good so far. Now he's at level 8. Yep. Might as well use Cure, uh, I do have lots of MP. That's shield level 9. People got level ups. So Hector will be reliably one-shotting these uh, stupid creatures from now on.
And because he leveled up his shield as well, um, he'll have slightly better chance of a good turn order. Because of increased evasion. The buckler only gives 4% evasion per level. So am I screwed here? No. It's going good. Alright, made it to Gatria. Seriously, no wipes no wipes yet. I'm so happy about that. Save right outside town in slot number one. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a split. Now let's make it all there. And I have plenty of MP. This time uh, he leveled up to level 10, right? Just one more level to go. Ambush! So, although it's not conclusive, uh, you can already see the benefits of slightly higher evasion. Both of them missed uh, Hector. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100. Uh, did I miss something? Anyway, one more. So that should wrap up uh, Furion's shield levels. Let's have a quick look at his evasion. Elevord, Elevord. Damn it, why did I even bother renaming them? There we go, he's at 99% evasion. And that's where he's going to stick with for... Uh, well, we'll see. What's his agility right now? It's still 10, so he hasn't gained a single point. See, this is, this is how bad the agility gain mechanic sucks. Now because of uh, Lin's additional bow level, even she has a chance to one-shot them. Chance, mind you. She'll probably never land many hits. There you go. These guys have just 6 HP. Nice! Come on Hector! Yeah! That was good turn order. So we got out of that. And he got an MP increase. This is good RNG. Oh, two hours up. And I'm still at the starting town. Eh, yeah, not really. Come on.
come on damn it gain some agility let's heal up first and recruit men Mindu joined the party. Poor guy. His name is butchered in every different translation. And get the next keyword. Okay. So, as our general strategy suggests, uh, movement to the back row. I'll buy him a bow if I can afford one. Meanwhile. Give me your copper plate. Yeah, this is a armor upgrade. Not just an armor upgrade, the copper plate is uh, has a lower evasion penalty as well. So, after equipping this plate, he'll have slightly more evasion. Which is always better. And yeah, I forgot that he comes with some additional items as well. So I get, I do have... I do get more money now. This is good news. Wrong button again. Should I buy him a bow? At the very least I can sell off uh, everything. Hmm, the staff. Do I ever need the staff? Ah, uh, not really. I can buy one if, if I really wanted to. So, 2000 gil now. That's nice. But I'll use that for spells. I'll, I'll uh, reserve that for spells. Min is done. Next checkpoint is at Poft. save slot 1 and uh, I'm seriously considering to to give everyone bows that'll just make the battles that much quicker but right now yeah I, I just want to play it safe Okay, that works. Finally, the results of my hard work. One point of agility. I'm tempted to just go back and save. But no, mental resilience. I need to build up mental resilience. Uh, how much MP does he have? He has 25 MP which is fine. Right. Now I've got two options here at uh, Paloom. Actually first up, we've got a whole bunch of new spells. We've got Blink, Protect, I believe Protect works. Blink, Protect, Shell and yeah, Cure we've already seen. Right now, uh, 
keeping up with my minimalist approach, uh, unless I really need those spells, I'm not going to buy them or train them. So right now, yeah, we don't really need anything. We got, uh, we have two options to travel from Palum to Poft. Either I can take the ferry or uh, I can walk. So at this moment, ferry is a lot safer, obviously, because uh, it's quite a long walk to Poft. But the reason I have Poft as a as a next split is I am planning to walk there to demonstrate the new monsters and at the same time finding out how to deal with those monsters now itself is a much better strategy than uh, walking from walking in the later part save at slot 1 and uh, let's uh, begin the journey that's a good start Nice! Hector strength. That's what Hector is known for. So based on the damage output I've seen on these guys, uh, with the amount of uh, defense we have right now, they, they shouldn't be able to do any damage whatsoever, as just demonstrated. It shows that it's a shield block, but uh, effectively it's because of all the defense that he has. Come on, agility! Uh... Still the same monsters. Come on, we are in a new loading zone now. Oh, Maria, I did. I mean, Lin. Oh, was that a critical? Four damage still. I'm not. Uh, too worried about that. There's still four enemies to go. So maybe I will cure. Him. Oh yeah, I think I will cure him up at the end of uh, when the battle is about to get over, which seems to be now. Good, worked out. New enemies? Nope, still the same. I'm getting really unlucky here. Finally a new enemy. So as I explained about monster mechanics before, um, every monster has to have, mandatorily has to have a physical attack. And monsters can either uh, use magic or use their physical attacks. So whenever we encounter a new monster, I'm just going to assume that uh, they only can do physical hits because obviously that is guaranteed. And if it turns out that they can do magical damage, then we'll figure out how to deal with them. Nice, he's blocking everything.
Holy shit. So for now, what we have seen is the Queen Bee does not have any magic attack. But the physical attack does hurt, although that was a critical. Now her poison is obviously permanent. Thankfully we have Minwu. New enemies here, Bloodsucker. <laughs> oh my god, the translation just uh, went crazy about these names. So again, looks like they're just uh, physical attacks and not very strong at that. Okay, he did one damage. I'm not too worried about one damage. Ooh, people got strength. Made it to Poft. I will save and call it a split. Do I need anything in Poft? Uh, no, the spell selection is the same. Actually, why the hell did I? Oh yeah, just it, this is just a save. Just this, this is just a pit stop to save. And save on slot one. Now the split, and let's make our way to Salamand. New enemies Goblin Guard. Let's find out what they have. Again. Any new enemies, just uh, assume they have physical hits. First, we, first time we see a magical hit there, arrow 1. So goblin guards we need to find a way to deal with. Seriously, goblin guard not found? That is so weird. So based on what we have seen here, looks like looks like the goblin guard's uh, arrow attack does not do that much damage. So we can keep up with cures. So that's the strategy that I'm going to be adopting for now. Uh, keeping with the minimalist approach. And a new enemy, Loper. He did all of 2 damage, I'm not too worried about that. 10 damage! Okay. I hope we don't kill him. Oh crap! There we go, that's the first official wipe. Oh my god.
Damn it! I feel so bad. It was a goddamn critical hit. His normal hit just did uh, 2 damage. Damn it. <sighs> but at least it gives me a point of reference. Man, I feel so bad for that wipe. I have to work on my mental resilience. Okay, the same bastard. This time I'm gonna be proactive here. Oh, come on! Okay, still got a chance. He has 30 HP. Come on, turn. Oh, come on! <laughs> this is horrible turn order. This is horrible turn order. Oh, god damn you! <laughs> at least, it was, at least it was the first battle. Pathetic turn order. Still, that is expected early game. It'll, it'll increase, it'll improve. Th the turn order situation will improve. Oh my god, who knew that the loper would turn out to be so hard? Yeah, these guys are chumps. Damn it. I feel worse than what I expected to feel. Even for such... Oh, this bastard again. No, I'm gonna be preemptive. What's the use though? Just hope for good turn order. Oh, come on, man! Okay, at least he didn't gain HP. And I'm gonna keep him at that uh, HP value. Yeah, let, let him be there. Wow. So because of that monster's uh, relatively high evasion at this point in the game, that's what caused the issue with turn order. Anyway, made it to Salaman at least. Uh, heal up. Should I even bother to heal up? Nah, Elibwood has all of his MP, so I think I'll keep Hector at 33 MP. 33 HP, I mean. Uh, new selection of spells, which I definitely cannot afford, not now. But, we do get a new shield. In fact, I should have got a new shield earlier. Why did I wait so long? Bronze shield. And should I... Should I tank up on defense? I do have a lot of money at this stage. Effectively nothing to spend it on, so I think I will. In fact, in fact, I should have routed it, but uh, I should go to Bofsk and buy the silver plate first. That would be the best bang for my buck. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And keep it on the Salamand split. Why not?
Wait, let me just buy the better uh, headgear and gauntlets at least. Because only only the chest piece is available in uh, Basque. So did I buy a bronze shield? Did I not even buy a bronze shield? What is wrong? No, no, not uh, Elevo. Hector. Bronze shield. There we go. And uh, some pieces of armor. Let me just sell this thing off. One bronze helm and bronze gloves. What will be his defense now? Ten defense should help out a lot. Let's make our way to Basque. No goblin guards here, so no issue of uh, magic attacks. And these guys effectively cannot land any damage unless it's a critical hit. I like that bronze shield. And I think I will go ahead and buy a bow for uh, Min Wu as well. Where is the bow available? Is it in Poft? Might as well stop over at Poft again. Just as a save point. Just want to see new enemies, Sasquatch. Okay, so again, let's just assume that they are purely physical. haven't landed a hit yet all right looks like uh, even these guys don't have enough attack to pierce my defense that's great news Fantastic. So Sasquatch, non-issues. I'll just have a uh, min move with the bow to speed the these things up. Oh, more level up, and finally he got an evasion increase. Now he's going to be twice as hard to hit. Do you guys have a bow? While I'm at it, might as well get one for Hollywood as well. Where am I going? This is not the weapon shop. Where's the weapon shop? There we go. Hey, give me a bow. You have only the basic bow. Should I go with this? I don't think the longbow is available anywhere. It's okay, I have a lot of money. And I am I have decided not gonna not gonna buy one for Elliewood. Because it's way too much uh, stress keeping track of uh, when the battle is gonna end and switching him over and over. I'll just have him on uh, double shield duty for quite a while. He still hasn't gained any point of agility after that first one. 
This just sucks, man. It sucks. Uh, let's give Menwu the bow. And make our way to Bask now. I could take the airship, but uh, hey, not at this stage, not at this stage, same old, same old. And immediately Minwoo can one-shot these guys, huh? <laughs> He's better than Lin, even in his physical stats. So there you see the benefit of that evasion level. And things are just gonna get uh, better and better in terms of a guy uh, Hector not being able to get hit. So we got the Goblin Guards again, um, yeah, manageable. Whenever they do their, their arrow attack, I'll just heal that damage up. On early board, heal yourself up. That went well. Come on, encounter frequency. Just goblins. Ah, uh, the amount of defense he has. <laughs> the, those bronze equipment are turning into turning out to be a pretty good investment. so close to the save point same old same old again These drops are just cash at the moment. Uh, let's just... Uh, Elevood still has 24 MP so I don't need to heal up at all. Just make a beeline. Damn, get out of the way. Do they have any good... Uh, I don't need weapons. Wait, wait, wait. Do they have a longbow? They do! Nice! 250 bucks. I can afford that. Here's one for Lin. And here's one for Min. <laughs> that rhymes.
Now let's go grab a silver plate. Silver plate is probably the best piece of equipment at this stage. And these guys just sell the bronze crap. Which I already got. Fifteen defense at this stage. Fantastic. I can save. And now let's go back to Salaman. More goblin guards. So I'll need to be on the lookout here for their arrow attack. Ooh, 19 damage. Looks like the arrow attack is pretty infrequent. Not an issue. That damage upgrade is fantastic on the longbow. I never usually use bows, so it'd be pretty interesting to find out. Min, I was complimenting you and you are now consistently missing. Are we going to be like that? There you go. All I needed to do was complain, huh? Finally, Elibird! Oh my god, shitlord. 12 agility. Oh, I can see this is gonna take a long, long time. God damn you, Elibird. More goblins. I'm still to encounter one type of enemy. Waiting for that. I thought it was pretty common around here. Apparently not. Or I've just been extremely unlucky. Do I need to even heal? Might as well heal that two missing MP. And let's uh, make our way to Semite Cave. There we go, new type of enemy. Let's see what he has in store for us. Ooh, we can actually hurt Hector, but only three damage. Sure, shouldn't be an issue. Fourteen damage. Oh, god damn it. That means I need to be wary of this guy. Yep, that's another wipe. You 
fortunately I just saved so need to be aware of beware the soldier he has a very powerful physical hit Yeah, these guys just can't hurt me at all. Nice! <laughs> and Min's bow skill increase as well. So back row characters are doing the job. Right, I can save outside a dungeon and that would be on slot 2. Let's go in. No, wrong button. Now I am also going for 100% uh, completion as much as possible. So I'll be going for all treasure chests, all bosses and stuff like that. Just to crank up the challenge even more. More agility! I'll be damned if I'm going to lose that. I'm going to go out and save immediately. Another soldier, I need to be... He has a magical attack! Wow! Wow! So, here is another reason. It was such a critically important decision that I chose uh, Hector instead of Lin to be on, in the front row. Look at that! She just got one shot by 24 damage. Fortunately, uh, characters in the back row dying is not a big deal. They don't get HP up, mind you. It's the character in the front row if he dies, which is the issue. So we are still fine right now. Um, let's just carry on. Let's leave her dead. Good job, Hector. And Min has the necessary tools to resurrect. Now fortunately after she died and brought back she's only at 2 HP so uh, obviously any amount of damage is going to kill her but uh, more importantly whenever someone targets her she's just going to die and uh, not gain any HP. She's not going to take uh, damage and still live. That's the critical part. I'm going to leave her at 2 HP. large formation arrow on Elliewood Oh, 
Alright. Okay, this guy again. Twenty damage on uh, Min should shouldn't really affect him. Yep. Oh, crap. Wow, these guys are hitting quite hard. Okay, took care of them. More agility, nice. Now if I wipe, I'm gonna be so salty. And trust me, I am going to wipe. It's guaranteed. New enemy, a balloon, okay. So once again, any new enemy, just assume until you find out more uh, that they are just uh, physical based. So let's uh, prioritize the green goblins. Arrow on Elevon can be healed up. Looks like the bombs don't have uh, enough strength to Pierce uh, Hector's defense. So the bombs look all right. this asshole again This entire challenge run is going to be pretty much about encounter to encounter. Anything happening between encounters is essentially a waste of time. Cutscenes, walking around, all of that. And that's the way I like it. Green Goblins. Just gonna heal up.
little in God's strength. If only you knew how rare that is. Nice, nice. Thirteen damage on min should be fine. Missed. Come on. And the soldier did an arrow. That's fine. Let her stay dead. In fact, even if I bring her back to life, she's only going to come back at one HP. So, no, it's not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. She won't gain HP. Early game, I really need to get lucky with turn order. Wrong button again. Bombs. More bow skill. Always appreciate it. See, it's not about the one gill, it's about opening that chest for 100% completion. Okay? Yeah, it's about the principle. <laughs> That's fine. More agility! Oh my god, I'm gonna lose all of that. Oh, that was some damage. Let's heal up. It's really the critical hits that are a big problem. And for whatever reason, there seem to be a lot of critical hits by monsters. Why? Cause for investigation. Uh, 
I'll be right back. Alright, let's carry on. No encounters? Fifty five damage from Min. And miss next time. <laughs> oh my god, what a variance. 30 damage now. Prioritize the Green Goblin. New enemies! Green slime. Assume they are just physical. Oh yeah, restriction I forgot to mention about is the no escape clause. I have, I cannot uh, run away from battle, so I have to fight every battle. Woo! Critical! Body, death, matter, mind, poison. Oh yeah, these things resist everything.
I'll heal up when only one or two remain. Wanna play it safe? Although he's only lost uh, 6 HP. So, our first encounter with slime enemies shows us that uh, physicals are not the way to go. Fortunately, we just got a fire book, so I think, uh, and they are weak to fire. So it's fire. Fire is justified. I'll have Elevood learn fire, and uh, next time I encounter, next time I encounter green slime, I'll just uh, wipe them away with fire. Defense on a green slime is 230. Isn't it 255 max? So this battle is going to take a while. I'm going to have to rely on crits. On the positive side, I'm getting a tons of weapon weapon experience. I think they share a defense value with the Emperor too. Aha! Come on, crit. There we go, and I think this is a good point to heal. Oh, this battle is just dragging on and on and on. Although strictly speaking, that fire spell is not necessary. Well, I'll say it is necessary for my sanity. Come on, somebody crit. Four damage without a crit. <laughs> Look at that, lot of weapon experience. Just have uh, Elliwood learn fire immediately. Now let's carry on. Hello, who is this gentleman? Let's find out. And we have the first boss of the game. He is the sergeant. Uh, new enemy, let's assume that he only has physical hits. Uh, let's go ahead. Seriously, not able to hit? Twenty five damage. Wow. So, no, he has a lot of damage capabilities. Let's keep uh, Hector healed up. Two hits for eighty two damage. Holy shit. Okay, this is Mayday. This is Mayday. This is effectively going to be a wipe, obviously. I did expect this. Uh, is there anything we can do at this stage? I think not. I think not. So, for the first time, we have met an enemy who out damages our defense. 
how do we deal with this guy? Plus he has an arrow attack. Must keep that in mind as well. Really, you're taking so much time to kill us. <laughs> Seriously? There we go. Okay, so we die to this uh, sergeant and uh, yeah, as I was saying, blind simulation, FF2 expects this, FF2 expects you to die here. What you're supposed to do now is figure out a strategy to defeat the sergeant. Obviously, what do we know about him? His He has greater attack than our defense. One thing we can do is uh, to somehow get better defense uh, via the protect spell. Now, Min already has protect, so it's not like we need to buy one and uh, grind our, grind for ourselves. I think I have to really expect you to use fire. <coughs> Whether you die in the first try or not, FF2 couldn't give a damn. <laughs> that's a fair point, that's a fair point. Magic. But I like to think that the way FF2 works is... You die first. No questions asked. Although I am taking... Uh, minimalist approach which is uh, not what you would normally do in a RPG casual run you'd buy all the spells grind them out a bit suppose so yeah um, it does make sense that uh, you suppose you, you would use fire but uh, 140 HP you'd still take quite a bit of casualties Anyway, my, my point of view is that uh, you can't do that on, uh, on your... FF2 doesn't expect you to do that uh, on, on your first try. Any, any of the bosses, in fact, whenever you encounter a boss, not, not any boss, uh, any new dangerous monster, obviously the Gigas is the most well-known example of that paradigm. Yeah, that is what I think FF2 expects. So, strategy for the sergeant. What are what can we do? As she Shihali mentioned, we can use fog uh, on sergeant to eliminate the arrow threat. However, it's also arrow unless arrow hits uh, Hector. Arrow hitting uh, Elibud or Lin is not an issue because they will outright die. Min is also an issue, but he can heal up. 8 MP of black magic always seemed like an intended way through that boss. Although at one point I cataloged some the next 6 ways people found to get through. That's nice. I just I just think that uh, because he has so much defense, uh, it'll take you a while to just figure out you need to use MP. And by that time, half your party is dead. Although you do have Min Wu, so... Yeah, I, c I can see how people will somehow survive through the skin of death, their teeth. After face like it says boss, <laughs> figure out a plan in time or die. Yeah, I'm the other way. FF2 says die, figure out, and then repeat. So, strategy for the sergeant going forward, uh, yeah, as we said, arrow on Hector is a major threat. Arrow on Mindu is kind of a threat, but not quite. He can heal up. Uh, his physical attack is a threat. 
So his physical attacks can probably be nullified by blink. Blink I wouldn't rely because his Hector's evasion is still very low. I would go for protect. What's his protect level? Okay, shield. It's, a, it's called shield here. Shield level 5. So yes, the strategy for the sergeant is cast protect first turn because uh, obviously his physical attack is the main threat. Uh, his uh, magic attack, he can he has 4 targets to select but his physical attack, he can only really select Hector. So, and I'm kind of relying on turn order here as well. If I didn't want to rely on turn order, I could go grab a copy of Protect and uh, grind it up for Elewood. Let's not do that. I'm going to give it a couple tries at least before I go that uh, route. First turn Protect on Hector to kind of make him safe and then uh, if he gives me a chance, cast Fog on the Sergeant. That's the strategy we're going to use. Uh, let's see how that works out. And yeah, I did uh, notice that we lost those two points of agility. Which Elliwood had so painstakingly gained. <sighs> I'm gonna have to get used to this. Some more green goblins, but they're in the back row. Eight damage. Uh, yeah, let's play it safe and heal up. One green goblin to go. Come on, take care of him. There we go. Oh, I need to get all the chests again. Come on, give me good turn order. Damn it! I'm really getting screwed on turn order. Okay, that was super lucky. He did not gain HP and I'm gonna keep him at that uh, HP value. Okay, prioritize the green goblin. More strength, always appreciated. What I'm gonna start doing from now is focus more on shields for Hector. He has level 3 in fists, which is quite good. Evasion only of 7, which is why he's suffering so much. What is his evasion without armor? It's 25, which is quite decent. But uh, it's still not reliable for blink. So I'll go the protect route. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to start doing with Hector is in fights where Lin and uh, Mindu can handle with their bows, I'll switch him over to double shields and uh, yeah, so that he gets. Uh, a huge amount of uh, shield experience for that. Oh, holy shit. What do 
do we have here? Arrow on Hector and he's almost dead. Wow, I need to heal him up. Hollywood. Wow. A large group of uh, these things is a pretty big problem actually. Can a multi-target work? I don't think so. So I need a way to waste a turn. So what I'm gonna do is just unequip her bow and have her attack ineffectively. You can finish off this goblin and you unequip your bow as well. So that this turn Elewood can heal himself and then next turn he can heal Hector. And just hope that uh, these guys don't spam their bow attack meanwhile. Which is exactly what's happening. Now I can finish them off. Re-equip. Re-equip. Oh, and I forgot to equip double shields on him. I need to practically remember to do that. Okay. Um, okay, let's just carry on. Another large group. It is this only one green goblin here this time. Uh, I think that uh, the bow group can handle this, so. But yeah, I'll switch him over to double shields when the battle's about to get over. Because you only get uh, experience uh, for what you're equipped, equipped at the end of the battle. Irrespective of uh, what happened during the battle. Now seems to be a good time. Also with double shields he has uh, a l much more evasion. Which obviously helps. Can the bow group deal with this? Let's let's see. Nah, it'll take too much time. I'll switch him back at the end. Three damage. Um, I'll risk it. Man, these damage ranges are just way too... And that's exactly what I wanted. Shield level.
Look at that. They are missing. Sometimes they are doing 50 damage. Damage ranges are just enormous. Alright, let's continue on. More bow skill. It's just sad that I'm not gonna get a good bow until way late in the game. And I'm I'm not planning to um, attempt any captain shenanigans. That's not gonna happen. This is gonna be as legitimate as I can make it. Part of the reason is because I have no more challenge runs left. Literally can't think of any. So, so this is gonna be probably a pretty prolonged one. Seeing as how 15 hours of Wonderswan playthrough took almost a month, more than a month. Wow, shudder to think how much this, this is gonna take in real time. Arrow on Maria and enough damage to justify a cure. Nice. It's always iffy on turn order with these guys. If I face too many issues with turn order, I'll just um, take some proactive measures against that and grind up shield level. Right now, I'm perfectly happy relying on the RNG for that. Sometimes it'll work in my favor, sometimes it won't. But if it gets too frustrating, yeah, I'm just gonna grind up some lot of shield levels on Hector and screw the randomizer for the turn order. Of course, Elevote is already taken care of. Nine damage. Yeah, I should heal him up. Holy shit, do less damage, woman. And now you just miss. <sighs> Wonder what will be the theme of my complaining during this playthrough. Certainly not going to be HP. Hmm. Oh, come on. Okay, now that the green goblin is available, prioritize him. Nice.
Ooh, whole bunch of green goblins. Expecting multiple arrow shots. One on Elevood. Ooh, almost killed him. Yeah, I need to heal uh, Hector again. Oh, she's gonna kill him. Oh, shit. This is rotten luck. But I should have anticipated it. I should have anticipated it. Crap. Curse are all over. Again. How much time? Okay, I still have some time. At least last run Elevood didn't gain any agility at all. So I don't mind losing that crappy run. Yep, she dies instantly. I need kind of the same thing to happen to Elevood as well. Fourteen damage. Whoa! Okay, 6 damage. Should be okay. See, this is what I meant by being screwed by a turn order. More green goblins. Oh man, need to heal him up. Whoa! Okay, okay. First, in this scenario, first thing we need to do is get rid of the green goblins. Hold the battle up until then. We need opportunities to cure everyone. Now we are good.
That's what I should have done last time. Not an issue. Oh crap, forgot about that. Still not an issue. Really? Again, turn order. If he had hit me... Let's see what's gonna happen here. So many arrows gonna be flying around. Min is fine. I need to heal up Hector. And this time calculate it properly. So that at the end of the last turn, exactly one enemy remains. Everybody's healed up. Uh, okay. Come on, man. Don't do that. See, this is why. Okay, the soldier missed. Now you can take care of him. Again, as long as we're not screwed by... Which we are. Screwed by turn order again! Fantastic. Just fantastic. Okay. So I'm actually going to stop here and it's obvious that uh, it's pretty obvious that I'm going to have to grind up some uh, shield levels on Hector in order to not be screwed by turn order because this has happened once too often now. So that's the program for next time. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching and uh, have a good day.